Yeah, so decades into this disease, we have made remarkable strides. No longer a death sentence. It's treatable as a chronic condition. New drugs are being developed all the time to make it more and more manageable. Let's speak now to someone at the frontier of HIV AIDS treatment, not only in South Africa, but globally. Joined now by Professor Salim Abdul Karim, director of CAPRISA, the Center for the AIDS Program of Research in South Africa. Professor, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We're sitting here towards the end of 2022 on World AIDS Day. As you look back, what are the biggest achievements uh, in this disease, in your, in your view? Good evening, Sally. It's great to be here with you on World AIDS Day, and good evening to all of you viewers. I mean, there's little question. If we look at the last 15 years of the pandemic, we're making steady progress, and the key uh, areas that we've been making steady progress. We have a clear plan. In 2016, the UN adopted the high-level plan for how to achieve our goal of ending AIDS as a public health threat by 2030. So we have a plan. We have a key tool, a technology in the form of antiretrovirals, and we know that when anti patients are on antiretrovirals, they don't spread the disease, so it's an effective prevention measure. So using these tools and achieving our plan should take us on the path that we have set. The challenge has been that we haven't been able to make the kinds of progress in the last few years, partly due to COVID-19, but also because there are elements of uh, the way in which HIV positive individuals are being dealt with in society, the stigma, the discrimination, the shame that they feel, all of those have uh, thwarted our efforts to get antiretroviral treatment to uh, a large proportion of the patients. The target we've set is 95% of patients who know their status should be virally suppressed uh, when they are on antiretroviral treatment. So that's the challenge that we're facing, despite our amazing achievements in terms of being able to get uh, HIV from where it was an inevitably fatal condition to one now where we can get treatment to the most remote part of Africa, mainly due to the shared responsibility and the global support through the Global Fund and PEPFAR. It's absolutely tragic that the stigma and the shame uh, is preventing people from getting on to the life-saving treatment that they need, that they are still dying, obviously not in the horrific numbers that we saw before treatment was widely available. And at the same time as these treatments uh, are saving lives, we're also seeing new developments. Just today we heard uh, that the SA Health Products Regulatory Authority, I think, has approved this two-monthly preventable jab. Would you say that's the sort of new frontier, or are there more things down the pipe that are going to be even more uh, astonishing? We're seeing incremental steps. So we know that antiretroviral drugs when used in HIV negative individuals can prevent HIV. In fact, we were the first to show that back in 2010. And taken as a tablet, taken as a gel, it doesn't matter. These antiretrovirals seem to work in preventing HIV. The challenge has been to get sufficiently large numbers of people who are at risk to take them. And there you have a problem because it means that you are asking people who are otherwise healthy, who do not have any illness, and you're asking them to take a daily tablet or you're asking them to take a monthly or two monthly injection. Or that's, that's quite a high bar to ask people because it means that they are uh, anticipating that they are at risk of HIV on an ongoing basis. And healthy young people, I'm not thinking I want to go and get HIV. So our problem has been that even though we have effective prophylaxis, large numbers of people, when they do start taking these tablets, they stop taking it after a few months. And that's going to be our problem. So we have to move towards a situation where we are 
where we have a long acting antiretroviral for prevention, one that can be given annually or at, at you know at most six monthly, so that we can go out and reach out to those individuals, go to where they are in schools and where young people congregate to make these options available, but we do not have one yet. So this current step of a two monthly injectable is a small step towards that goal. Tell me a little bit more about what Caprisa is working on, the Centre uh, for the AIDS Programme of Research that you head up. Uh, it has pioneered so many uh, wonderful breakthroughs in treating HIV AIDS. What are you working on currently? What are you most excited about? We started back in 1990 to focus on one problem, and that is how do we protect young women from getting HIV? How do we reduce their risk of getting HIV? What new technology can we use? We spent 18 years from 1993 when we first tested a, a, a film back all the way to Tenofovir gel in 2010. We spent 18 years studying this and just, you know, repeatedly just failing. At one point, we were even called the experts in failure because we we, we were making many attempts and just not achieving our success. But in 2010, that changed. And what that change has now come that we know the basic approach, make antiretrovirals available in the bloodstream to protect against HIV. Now, the problem is how to do that in the long term. So in Caprisa, we've chosen to pursue two pathways. The first is to make a little implant. Now, that's about a matchstick size little plastic tube and in it we make micro tablets of a long acting formulation of tenofovir called tenofovir alafenamide and we put these little tablets these micro tablets into that very small little matchstick sized tube and we put that under the skin in the arm like the way you have contraceptive implants and we are busy studying that is it safe does it get you the kinds of drug levels that would be protective? But the second is we're studying broadly neutralizing antibodies. We are studying an approach where we could give an injection every six months. So while an implant would be a year long, the injections would be six monthly. And can we give you enough antibodies and will they protect you? And that's the study we're busy doing right now. We put it in animals and it works. It protects monkeys from getting a monkey form of HIV. Does it work in humans? Well, we need to answer that question. So watch the space in three years from now when we have that result. Quite incredible. Thank you so much uh, for talking to us about the amazing breakthroughs that are happening to make sure that HIV AIDS stays a manageable disease. Professor Salim Abdul Karim, Director of Caprisa, the Centre for the AIDS Programme of Research in South Africa. Still ahead.